so first of all these guns are clear gun is clear nothing in the mag or the chamber nothing in the chamber there's no mag So what do we have? We have my Bull Armory SAS2 Ultralight and 3.25 inch vari uh, variation. This is what I've been carrying the last few months. This is what I brought I bought two weeks ago. This is Alpha Foxtrot S15. So I'm posting this because I've had several requests for people to kind of do a comparison between the two. As you can see, they're, they're of a similar size. So this is a 3.5 inch. This is a 3.25 inch. Um, this has fluting out the ass. Um, and it uses a lot of uh, alloy. Um, I keep seeing reports of people saying that uh, that this is a forged sliding frame. I don't believe that is the case. I thought these were aluminum alloy across the board. Um, so with this one, it's I believe it's the frame is a uh, alloy. Uh, the slide and the barrel are uh, steel uh, forged uh, this has a DLC uh, coating diamond like carbon uh, this has PVC uh, but I do actually have notes to compare uh, the two uh, I spent a good bit amount of time writing up a script for these two guns uh, for this review so uh, my initial thoughts is uh, of the uh, S15 um, I shot 150 rounds through it on the first and only range visit. There were no hiccups whatsoever. Um, it shoots very well. I shoot it just as well. And I'm jumping ahead on my notes here, and we'll cover that in a minute. But it shoots just as well as this gun, even though this gun has an optic. Um, they, shoot, they, they shoot on par with each other without the optic, and I'm shooting just as well with it with the optic with the exception of uh fast follow-on shots which gives i mean that the optic gives you an advantage in in those types of situations um but my initial thought my initial thoughts are that the s15 is is very well built um it has uh, high uh, tight tolerances uh there is no slime uh ugh, slide the frame gaps there is no fried uh, slide the frame wiggle at all uh, front or back and I can actually demonstrate that there's no wiggle the front back I don't hear anything I don't feel anything um, if you look down the, the back of the gun you can see uh, how it's cut there's not any there's no gaps or anything uh, the uh, extractor is not flush Whereas the one on the uh, the Bull Armory is. Um, has a nice barrel lock up. Has a nice trigger. Uh, the trigger is not uh, laterally loose. But it is loose up and down. Um, and there is, no, there is no trigger creep. So again, the gun is clear. So if you look at the trigger here as I pull it. There's some take up. Pull, 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 snap. So I'm pulling, but there's nothing. It, it breaks cleanly. That one has a little bit of, of creep. So, um, again, there is no uh, lateral play in the uh, in the trigger. 
but that it does have some vertical play and, and it is also adjustable uh, for our over travel adjustment uh, so it has a great finish um, that's the first thing I notice in and that would that's a recurring theme I mean I notice it when whenever someone else is reviewing it right um, has very nice control services what really got me as soon as I uh, the first round out of the gun uh, I could actually feel the the checkering on the front mainly the front biting into my fingers uh, this is the only 1911 or 2011 that I have uh, that has uh, front checkering so that is new to me and it's gonna spoil me I'm not gonna want any other gun that doesn't have that uh, I already know that uh, which is problematic for my wallet right um, so so it has very nice control surfaces the front and rear uh, strap checkering is very aggressive which offers great controllability of the gun at the range um, it has great shooting traits uh, for me it offers low recoil impulse because of the weight the additional weight of the slide in the barrel um, that that offers yet more controllability of the gun right um, so the slide is actually heavier than what's on the uh, the bull armory there and then that that weight helps soak up the recoil for those who don't already know um, the sights are okay they're not the best and they can certainly be worse um, so standard Novak style sights there front and back um, excuse the noise there uh, these are not night sights um, they're high vis um, they're not glow in the dark um, I didn't I did not have any uh, problems using them at the range whatsoever um, so even with the irons I can shoot this gun just as well as the the ultralight as I said before uh, I was shooting uh, between seven and ten yard groups so I started out with seven um, and spent maybe 15 minutes at seven yards just getting used to the gun and then I decided to take it out for the tent for 10 yards the rest of the, of the session and I uh, had no problems uh, so I was hitting uh, at 10 yards just as well as I was at seven and a lot of people they might think that that's not a huge difference that that's actually a significant difference uh, if, if you saw my groups <laughs> you're pretty much seeing no change between the groups so so I'm not sure if that's the gun or if that's me I've been practicing shooting at 10 yards my, my normal go to is 7 um, I have extended it out to 12 I start noticing spread around 12 uh, I don't go beyond that because I'm training for self-defense and I'm not gonna be shooting 25 yards at you know in a self-defense situation I'm sorry I'm not um, some people go to the range and, and challenge themselves but I go to train and I can challenge myself and train at the same time but I'm not getting anything from from the gun or from you know I'm not getting anything out of it when I'm shooting at 25 yards I can I can't even see that far um, not to be accurate I mean unless I have a like a giant target um, but at that point it's like uh, I, I just some people might get something out of that I, I don't I get nothing you know so uh, um, so and again if I had an optic I, I might be able to get away with shooting further out um, optics do help in that regard somewhat um, another advantage that optics give are uh, quick you know follow on shots so so in that regard this gun does better and I did do some semi rapid fire with this gun um, and I did almost as well um, I did have to kind of wait for for my sights to settle and that could be a training issue as well okay so we, we covered my initial thoughts of the S15 right so 
I talk mainly about its strengths. I want to talk about its cons now. So the gun is MSRP'd at uh, a bit over 1500 bucks. Uh, but it only comes with one mag. This, this is the S15 mag by Shield Arms. So uh, I had no problems with this mag, by the way, and that's not on my script here. I forgot to highlight that uh, of the 150 rounds, this fed without issue, and it was mainly uh, FMJ and uh, like uh, round nose, and there was 50 rounds of that was flat nose. Uh, no issues. I did not shoot JHP out of this because I don't intend on carrying it and I don't want to spend the extra money to to test that if I'm not going to carry it right. Um, I'll let someone else do that. Um, once I decide I want to carry it, which I, 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 I might, um, I'll test for uh, JHP for self-defense rounds. But anyways, the, uh, the mags. Uh, $1,500 gun, all $1,500 plus guns should have at least two mags. This only comes with one. And so that whole range trip, it felt like I was spending a lot of time loading up ammo into one mag. Um, you know, I mean, what the fuck? The cost of a second shield arms mag is a drop in the bucket in comparison to that, that MSRP price, right? Um, so, so two, give, give two, maybe even three. Um, it, it's just kind of ridiculous. You know, I, I could, I would expect something like that out from, uh, uh, Rock Allen Armory and some of the other budget minded guns, uh, gun brands, but this is not a budget minded gun. Um, it's, it's not high end, but I would say it's, it's middle of the ballpark or at least, uh, mid level, low end if you want to include uh, uh, custom guns and things like that. So I, I do realize that, you know, there are some uh, production guns out there that, that cost $3,000. So if you're, if you're kind of including that, this is mid-pack. Okay, so, uh, uh, so the con is, uh, <clears throat> should, it come, should come with at least two mags. One mag is not enough. Another con is the, the, the beaver tail is fat it's somewhat uncomfortable and if you look at this you can see how fat it is that's even when you don't put it beside the bull armory you'll see a difference there so I'm trying to get behind the camera here without shaking it or whatnot so that I can put these two together for you so there you go it's a huge difference there and you notice it when you're holding the gun uh, you notice it when you're shooting the gun especially um, and some, in some cases, that might, I, I, I would imagine that would bother someone. So, again, the gun is unloaded, right? It's not even cocked at this point. So, cock it and put it on safe. So, if you look at my hand, my hands are size 10. Uh, but you could see that this might be problematic for me when I'm shooting. It didn't bother me. But I wasn't exactly riding the, the safety either. I was trying to avoid getting uh, impact on that on that that knuckle there. Uh, so I was shooting like this, which took my knuckle away. And wait for that truck to pass. Sorry about that. My windows are open. So, anyways, uh, I did not shoot this way at all. I suppose I could try. I'm just, I'm, you know, I got. I got uh, developing arthritis, so I'm not not really caring to have anything jarring my bones at this point in time. So uh, um, that beaver tail is uh, somewhat uncomfortable, even just holding it. It's wide, um, so it's very wide at the top, which isn't the norm for for that platform. Um, and from what I understand, and watching other reviewers that has been a somewhat a complaint uh, and from my understanding Alpha Foxtrot made an effort to lessen the width of, you know in that area um, but they they, <laughs> they should still try and get that down they should they should constantly work on that uh, so if you normally shoot 
while riding your thumb and you that's probably how you should be normally using uh, shooting that gun if you're shooting with your thumb riding over to safety that 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 beaver tail might be an issue for you um but again if if not then that's fine but another thing i wanted to kind of talk about was look how stiff that is not that's not a complaint it's an observation but that's one of the reasons why i opted not to uh to ride my thumb over to safety at, at the last range session because there was really no need um sure you want to train so that <clears throat> you don't have any issues across the guns that you shoot so that might not be a good option for folks that are very training focused <clears throat> so uh, um, I did run into an issue of field stripping the gun and keep in mind that this isn't my first 1911 this is my sixth 1911 um, I bought my first 1911 maybe close to maybe eight, nine years ago. So uh, I'm familiar enough with 1911s to where I know how to field strip them. Um, and some field strip differently than others. Um, this does not require a, uh, a safety, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, a paper clip or anything like that. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can demonstrate this. I did it in the last video that I did so let me try and break it down here off camera there you go so this is a regular field strip I did, did it off camera for two reasons so that I wouldn't get, you know, so the video wouldn't get taken down by, by one of the YouTube auditors. Um, and the other reason was because it was easier for me to kind of pull it close to me. And I'm, I didn't want to be behind the camera doing that. I didn't want to do it in front of the camera. Uh, but uh, for the YouTube auditors and reviewers, uh, the manual reviewers, <coughs> this is covered all in the manual. This is not gunsmithing. Uh, so it's taken down what I was having problems with was uh, I cleaned it twice the first time I cleaned it I wanted to just kind of well the, I took it down twice the first reason I took it down was just to kind of get an understanding how easy it was any nuances you know things like that I, I wanted to kind of know uh, so the second time I cleaned it was right before the range because I wanted to lube it and so when I was putting it back together Put the slide on got everything lined up and this pin this takedown pin or the slide release or slide catch pin would not go into the hole at all it, it, you can see here it's sliding in there now but i wasn't even it was it wasn't getting even this far so i took it apart and looked at it and i'm like what the hell and tried it and it took me 20 minutes to get this thing back together and it took me 15 to realize that th there was something wrong with the, the rail and the slide so this rail it's dark in here uh, but there's rail here and it inserts into the frame so there's some slots on the in the inside uh, evidently <clears throat> that moved and so and I could see it you know I could see it, there was a misalignment in the hole there so I took a screwdriver and kind of play with a little bit and made some manual adjustments um, that should not be happening that mean if it's happening now that means it's going to be happening in the in, you know again later on uh, hasn't happened yet and I've taken it apart maybe three or four times since then but that is an issue um, so I, I got it back together the first time the second time was right after that I wanted to kind of do it again just to see uh, well here's what happened I got it back together I got it realigned and the time between me getting it realigned the first time and getting the slide on and trying to make you know trying to get the pin in the hole it moved again so I had to stop what I was doing again 
get a screwdriver and realign everything and the second time I didn't have an issue so what we're going to do is we're going to put this back together again we're going to do it on the off camera but we'll leave the camera running and we'll see if we have any issues again get that barrel link proper there you go so it went in without a problem so for now safe again so there is that so if I continue to have problems with that I mean I've only had had it those that that one time uh, the second time I broke it down uh, but if I have any problems um, we would we will test out their customer service um, so I kind of wanted to highlight that because I haven't seen other people having problems with that and uh, we're doing this mainly for documentation purposes uh, to get more I guess camera time on the gun um, and and so that people can kind of know I know a lot of people have been asking about the gun Damn. you know between me watching the comments of other videos and after me posting my initial video all of the comments on the side I've been getting on reddit uh, and other uh, 1911 forums um, I know that there's an interest in this gun and the recurring theme is is like how is customer support um how is the gun built and you know i understand that you know when you when you start spending that amount of money on a gun while it doesn't have to be perfect um there has to be i mean it shouldn't have any problems with any of the basic items right uh and 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 having problems with that rail um that to me that's an issue um, and I have a feeling that I'll be dealing with that again soon. It, it'll pop up in Rare's head, head again I soon. Twice. Uh, and when it does, we'll just send it, send it in and test, test the customer service. Um, so comparing to the that's good the Bull Armory SAS 2 UL. Uh, the f you know, again, we're still on the uh, on the S15, but we're we're doing a direct comparison of some things as it relates to uh, uh, the two guns, right? Uh, fitment and finish uh, between the two handguns. The uh, Alpha Foxtrot has slightly better fitment. Uh, the AF has a far better uh, finish. So, so it has slightly better fitment and a lot better finish so that that dlc coating is is money has that money feel um even the, the lower that's not a dlc coated it feels really nice and it, it, if you notice it, it's not a it's not a poly lower trying to get used to the, trigger the grip isn't poly it's all one piece so Almost. there are no uh, grip panels uh, there are no, there, you know, there is no uh, plastic uh, grip module, so it, it's it's sort of a hybrid. You know, it's it's not a para. I don't think it's a para pattern, 1911, but it's not a 2011 pattern, 1911 either, right? Um, so so it has that going for it. The grip feels and is smaller on the uh, Alpha Fox Trot. It's a lot thinner. It's thinner than most 1911s regular 1911s uh single stack right um the grip texturing and the checkering is much better on that on the alpha fox drop um the sights uh, while i moved on to the optic uh for the uh, sas 2 um i did shoot it quite a bit with irons beforehand so so i can make a i can make a good comparison on iron since this gun is not optics ready right um so the irons on the SAS 2 are better uh, because they can be adjusted, the rear can be adjusted for windage as well as elevation. 
uh, the Alpha Foxtrot sights, the rear sight can only be uh, drifted for windage. Uh, but it does have elevation adjustability. So shooting wise, uh, this is going to be a tough one uh, to kind of describe. Uh, so when we're comparing the two, we're going to talk about the individual guns and we'll talk about the SAS 2 first. Uh, for me, um, and these are just shooting notes in general between the two guns. Uh, um, so for the, the ultralight, for me, the, the ultralight takes a bit of uh, effort and some training to get used to its lightness. Uh, so it might feel snappy to some folks that are, that are used to heavy 1911s. Uh, for me, um, I'm used to shooting the smaller guns, so it, it doesn't feel snappy to me. Um, not ultra snappy. I, there is some snap, but it's it's definitely something I can manage, and it's not something like I kept, you know, when I started shooting it, the immediate thought in my mind was not, oh my God, this is too snappy, I can't shoot this. You know, it's not like shooting like when I first shot 40 caliber and I'm like, fuck, you know, I, I can't control this. Um, it, it also depends on the person's build. If you have very strong uh, forearms and wrists, uh, wrists then you're probably going to be able to better control the gun. I do not. I don't have a big build structure. Uh, and plus, again, you know, like I was saying before, I, I, I deal, you know, I've been dealing with art, arthritis. Um, but still, um, a majority of my guns are small. My handguns are of the small type. Um, and some of them are more snappier, more snappy than these two guns. This gun is definitely not snappy. This gun, between the two, this one is the snappier. Uh, but I would not just, you know, blanket, you know, make a blanket statement that that the, wow. the bull armory is 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 snappy. It is not. Uh, for how light and short it is, it should be much snappier than it is. To be honest, uh, what snap that it does have, it, it's easily controlled. Uh, the grip. The immediate impression for me was that the uh, the ultralight's grip was not grippy, um, it borderline slick. Just just picking up, picking it up, and feeling feeling it. But uh, I thought it would be a problem, but it's not. You know, I shoot indoors, so my hands aren't they're not going to get sweaty. Uh, if I was outdoors and and doing like some outdoor training, you know, if I had my own land, for example, and my hands got sweaty, it might be an issue. But even so, when I was at the range, um, when I tamped down on the grip, uh, that, that, that impression disappeared. It just requires a little bit of leverage, right? Um, the trigger on the SAS 2 is light. And it might be light, too light for some folks who carry, right? Uh, I did a, a, a pull of five, and the average was two pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, a lot of people have a magic number in their head thinking, okay, well, every single gun that I'm, uh, that I'm ever going to carry has to match that number. I think, it's, uh, I think it's more than that. I think it depends on how the gun pulls, how it breaks, uh, you know, how crisp that trigger is, um, uh, how quickly you can, uh, you can get follow-on shot. It, it's, it's more to it than just a number. And so I don't believe that 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 the lightness of the trigger is is a huge thing i mean if it was in the low two pound range then it would be concerning uh, um and a lot of that can be mitigated by training getting to know the gun getting to know the trigger uh putting rain uh putting rounds through it uh what you know whether it's fmj or jhp it doesn't matter at that point right you're just trying to get used to the trigger so that you know that when you're when you do find yourself using it in a self-defense situation you instinctually know even even you know during the stress of the moment you instinctually know okay well if I pull any more on this this trigger it's going you know so uh, uh, some people might not understand that I might not agree with that but th these are my thoughts and these are my opinions um, and people ask for them so I'm sharing them right so uh um again the trigger it, it's not a huge issue um 
but it, it, it varies on who you ask. Uh, so, so if you find that it, you want this gun, but you might be turned off about there are people repeating that it's light uh, and might might be too light for carry, you can you can get the gun and then kind of send it to a gunsmith and have them make the uh, the sear spring heavier. You know, make the trigger heavier by kind of uh, doing some of that gunsmithing, right? So, I mean, that's not a problem in my opinion. Uh, and I might consider doing that. So, for the S15, uh, we're going to do the same thing. Now, we're just jumping over from one gun to the, to a, to the next. Uh, in my hands, I shot the F S15 better than I did the SAS-2. Uh, when considering both first range visits remember when I shot this gun at the range the first time I did not have that optic I did not have that flat trigger uh, but I put a good bit of rounds probably half so I have 623 rounds through that gun half of them were without those those options uh, again I still did better with this gun um, the grip I immediately noticed the check checkering on the front strap and I thought that this was going to give me an edge. Even before I, I went to the range, just gripping it, I felt how the, the serrations, the, the checkering was biting into my fingers. And I'm like, oh, man, I was like, this is going to be a nice gun to shoot. Um, and, and, and it gave me an edge. Um, the gun doesn't move in my hand at all. Uh, the the SAS-2 moves in my hand when I shoot, after I shoot. And I have to constantly readjust my grip to shore up, you know, to shore up, uh, that 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 grip change um it's just it it feels slick and i don't know if uh, i need to tamp down more but i shouldn't have to do that um and again it could be a training issue as well um as i put more rounds through it i i, I begin to be more comfortable with it and sometimes that's all it takes you should not expect to pick up any gun and and shoot it well or, or shoot it bad and then you know uh, I see this all the time where on in reviews where people they're not used to the gun they do a 20 now 15 minute review of it the intention is to to shoot the minimal amount of uh, rounds through it so they might shoot a hundred rounds through it they give up the gun they never shoot it again they they review it and they say well they shot like shit it's because you weren't used to it wasn't used to it you should not expect to pick up every gun to shoot it as an expert I mean even experts require some time with the gun uh, it's the same with you know professional car drivers and things like that you know uh, a lot of times when you see car reviews you see people you know if it, if you see if you watch Randy uh, uh, what's his name Randy Post um, when he does reviews for I think it's car and driver he's doing laps he's not just doing one lap uh, they probably been lapping that car all damn day, and uh, you know they'll they'll cut the footage and take you know 15 minutes worth of video from it, and uh, he'll make an assessment. But he's not making a 15 minute assessment. He's making an all day uh, assessment, and it should be the same with with anything that you you know whether it's microwaves or something that you're reviewing or whatever, you know. So, uh, um, lastly, the trigger. The trigger on the S15 is a bit heavy, uh, but it's probably better for carrying. Uh, the trigger has no creep, uh, which probably helps with accuracy, uh, but it's actually noticeably heavier than the SAS 2's trigger. Uh, not a con, just an observation. So in, in, in closure, uh, they both shoot very well, but are different in ways that require a decent amount of elaboration, which is what I've done. You know, I've spent 30 minutes kind of explaining the gun to you guys so that you have an understanding of what it's like to shoot and own it so that you can make a decision on whether you want it or not because what's going to happen is is you're going to be looking for this gun at a range you're not going to find this gun at no range as a rental um, nine times out of ten you're probably not you might but that's not definitely it's definitely definitely not going to be the norm in fact you probably won't find this one at no range as a rental either um, so this is why I think it's important for folks who actually own these guns to maybe spend a little bit of time and help your 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 gun buddy out by kind of just uh, talking about the gun so that they can have a 
a better understanding of how the gun is so that they can maybe make, you know, have the information they need to decide to purchase it or maybe not. You know, so uh, uh, I'm happy carrying the SAS-2 right now, but that might change as I get more trigger time with the S-15. Uh, what I would change is I can probably carry this gun tomorrow if I wanted, even with the sights. I mean, they're okay sights, but I would want something a little bit better. Um, and the optic so I bought this gun while trying to wait for the optic version to come out they have a version just like this that's gonna have a an optics cut so it's gonna be optics ready um, it was slated for mid-june release I didn't want to wait I went ahead and bought this gun and I figure well if I want to optic I can do one of two things I could sell this and use that money to fund you know to buy the optics ready gun or I can just send this somewhere uh, rep, uh, with a good reputation uh, or whoever you know it is um, if they have expertise in cutting an optic I'll send it to them and uh, it shouldn't be an issue um, now if you cut slides you know whether it's uh, for, for porting or for optics slides, you know, optics uh, cuts and things like that, then you should expect the, the gun maker to not, not, you know, I guess, further support the gun. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that because both of these guns only have a year of warranty coverage. So sooner or later, I'm gonna be on my own anyways, right? Uh, so there you go.